from the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. Welcome back to KPIX 5 News this morning. The time is 6.30. I'm Devin Fuehrer. And good morning. I'm Melissa Kane. And now to our top story. Outrage and disappointment as protesters take to the streets to denounce now Justice Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation to the U.S. Supreme Court. Hundreds of people turned out for rallies on both sides of the bay just moments after he was sworn in as the newest justice. KPIX 5's Andrea Borba shows us the mood at a rally in Oakland. At Oakland's Franco Gawa Plaza, the mood over now Associate Justice Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation to the Supreme Court was both somber. I was not surprised, but disappointed. And angry. I'm furious. I'm outraged. I'm humiliated. I'm heartbroken. I feel that America has betrayed us all. I'm just disgusted that our our elected officials did what they did. I, I wish every woman in America would be out here to stand up for ourselves. I'm disgusted at what's happened to our country and we need to fight back. Carrying signs that read Kevin No, a group of nearly 200 gathered to air their grievances with what they call a broken political and judicial process. And we need to uh, do a real investigation. No means no. And plan for the future. All my friends are going to register voters, as many as we can here and in swing states, and we'll be walking precincts and doing phone linking to try to turn some of the red districts blue. Patriarchy has in Oakland, Andrea Borba, KPIX 5. Similar protests erupted in major cities across the country. In Washington, hundreds crowded into the National Mall. Others stood on the steps of the Supreme Court and on the east side of the Capitol building. Demonstrations also happened in other cities, including Cleveland, Atlanta, and Austin. Meanwhile, President Trump celebrated at a rally in Kansas. He told the crowd that the bitter confirmation fight was the Democrats' fault. Radical Democrats launched a disgraceful campaign to resist, obstruct, delay, demolish, and destroy. To so many millions who are outraged by what happened here, there's one answer. Vote. Now, demonstrators believe that allegations of sexual misconduct should have disqualified Kavanaugh from the high court, but there are some women who say they support him. The reality is that our judicial system is based on the presumption of innocence. Innocent, innocent until proven guilty. guilty. Innocent until proven guilty. Thank you for talking. Kavanaugh won Senate confirmation yesterday by a vote of 50 to 48. A short time later, he was sworn in in a private ceremony inside the Supreme Court building. San Francisco Mayor London Breed said in a statement, the confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court is an insult to women and survivors of sexual assault. We should believe victims when they come forward and their stories must always be more important than any political goals. Republican Mitt Romney, who is running for Senate in Utah, tweeted this, I hope and expect that Judge Kavanaugh's excellent record on the second highest court in the land will be matched by his work on the highest court in the land. First Lady Melania Trump also mentioned Justice Kavanaugh during her first solo foreign trip in Africa. While touring the Great Pyramids yesterday, she took time to speak to reporters about the ongoing Supreme Court controversy. Well, I, but I would say that if we're talking about the, the Supreme Court and uh, Judge Kavanaugh, um, I think he's highly qualified for the Supreme Court. I'm glad that uh, Dr. Ford was heard. I'm glad that J Judge Kavanaugh was heard. FBI investigation was done, is completed, and Senate voted. The First Lady was also asked about her husband's constant Twitter activity. Well, I don't always agree what he tweets, uh, and I tell him that. I give him my honest opinion and honest advice, and um, sometimes he listens and sometimes he doesn't. But I have my own voice and my opinions, and uh, uh, it's very important for me that I, I express what I feel. The First Lady returned to Washington, D.C. overnight. Her four-day trip took her to Malawi, Kenya, and Egypt. And U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is wrapping up his latest trip to North Korea after meeting with that country's leader, Kim Jong-un. And today's talks are part of an ongoing effort to, keep, to get Kim to give up his 
nuclear weapons. Pompeo posted the following on Twitter, had a good trip to Pyongyang with, and met with Chairman Kim. We continue to make progress on agreements made at the Singapore summit. Thanks for hosting me and my team. Now, the Singapore summit refers to the June meeting between Kim and President Trump, where the two agreed to denuclearization of North Korea, but only in general terms. It is expected to cost $7.7 .7 million this year for U.S. Marshals to provide security for Education Secretary Betsy DeVos. The Washington Post says that would be an annual increase of nearly a million dollars. Security includes round-the-clock protection for DeVos, who, is off, who often travels to schools across the country. Previous secretaries were protected by an Education Department security team. But DeVos is a more polarizing figure, which has led to increased security concerns. Adult film star Stormy Daniels, who claims she had an affair with President Trump, performed just a few hours ago in the Sacramento area. Daniels also drew big crowds on Friday night at a strip club in Rancho Cordova. She's been touring the country promoting her new book called Full Disclosure. In it, she claims she was paid by the president in 2016 to keep quiet about their affair in 2006. I mean, our president is kind of going around that him and Storm were together. I feel like it's part of being a patriotic American to be here. Daniels also has a performance at the Penthouse Club in San Francisco next month. President Trump has repeatedly denied ever having an affair with her. Well, back here in the Bay Area, Nevada police are asking for help to identify a suspected bank robber. The robbery was reported Friday afternoon at the U.S. Bank on Grand Avenue. Police released this surveillance photo of the suspect. They say he passed a note to a teller demanding money, but he did not brandish a weapon. He then ran away towards the Nevada Library and drove away in a blue Chevrolet sedan. Anyone with information on the suspects is asked to call the Nevada Police Department. And Petaluma police have arrested a felon found with suspicion bomb-making materials in his home. Officers found the materials last week during a probation check at Robert Brussels' home. They say the 62-year-old was possibly making a bomb with gunpowder, road flares, and an electrical panel. They also found shotgun cartridges with the gunpowder emptied out and methamphetamine. Brussels told police he was making a gunpowder rocket, but was unable to explain why he had those other items. He was arrested for probation violation and possession of a controlled substance. Next month, California voters will decide on several ballot measures, including Proposition 3. It calls for $8.9 billion in general obligation bonds for water infrastructure projects. Now, supporters of Prop 3 says it would help disadvantaged communities improve their water systems and help restore and protect watersheds in the state. Opponents contend that Prop 3 does not include enough oversight on how that money is going to be spent, potentially benefiting special interests. Incredible video to show you of a cliff rescue at Bodega Bay. Now, this happened on Tuesday when a Petaluma man fell from the cliff and into the ocean. His friends scrambled down to help him, but then he got stuck on the side of the cliff. A crew sent a helicopter to rescue the friend that was stuck on the cliff, but the man who fell into the ocean did die. The incident is under investigation by the California State Parks. Big crowds are expected to pack San Francisco today for two major events. We are, of course, talking about Fleet Week and hardly strictly bluegrass music festival in Golden Gate Park. KPIX 5's Katie Nielsen went to both to give us a taste. How are you doing, young man? Four-year-old James Pettit wanted nothing to do with Fleet Week. You don't like planes? Nope. Not impressed? Nope. You want to be a fighter pilot? Nope. But it didn't take long. Do you like to wear the helmet? Yeah. To win him over. I like it. Others weren't such a tough sell. Eyes trained on the sky, not wanting to miss a single minute. You look up and you can see cool things. Like a precision Navy parachute team and a Coast Guard demonstration. I'm a pilot, and uh, so I love airplanes. So everything that has to do with airplanes, this is me. But the crowd favorite needs no introduction. Blue Angels. The Navy's precision flying team roared above the city, thrilling the crowds during the 45 minute long show. Across town at Golden Gate Park, about 300,000 people are at Hardly Strictly today, the free bluegrass festival. So you got the little kids, 
you have the old adults who have been coming here since the 60s. That's really special. Alvaro, who likes to be called the Daisy Dude, says you can feel the flower power love in the crowds. He says people feel free to let loose and dance to the twangy harmonies sung by the fiddlers. The characters, man, in San Francisco, they all show up here. In San Francisco, Katie Nielsen, KPIX 5. The music starts again at 11 a.m. this morning at Golden Gate Park for the Hardly Strictly Music Bluegrass Music Festival. Two Israelis are dead and a third wounded after a Palestinian gunman opened fire today near a Jewish settlement in the occupied West Bank. According to the uh, Rutgers News Service, the gunman had worked in a factory where that shooting took place. At least 10 people are dead after a magnitude 5.9 earthquake struck Haiti overnight. The USGS says the epicenter of the quake was about 11 miles northwest of the city of Port de Pay. More than 100 people were injured and many of them had to be hospitalized. Haiti officials say there is no tsunami warning in effect right now. In 2010, the country suffered from a 7.1 magnitude earthquake and that killed over 200,000 people. A powerful typhoon is barreling towards Japan. It's the second major storm to hit the island nation in a week. Several people have already been injured by powerful winds. People are warned to be on alert for possible landslides and flooding. And a Brazilian surfer has just broken the world record for the biggest wave ever surfed by a woman. Now back in January, Maya Gabira conquered this massive 68-footer off the coast of Portugal. And earlier this week, the Guinness Book of World Records finally announced that it was, in fact, the biggest wave ever surfed by a female. In 2013, Gabira had a grueling wipeout that almost ended her life, but she says that only motivated her to go bigger. An Ozzy Osbourne show at Shoreline Amphitheater in Mountain View had to be postponed. The star needed emergency surgery on his hand yesterday after an infection had gotten worse. Osbourne posted these pictures on Twitter after that surgery, seemingly in good spirits. The No More Tours 2, which was supposed to happen last night, has been rescheduled for Tuesday, October 16th. And authorities in Southern California are trying to track down a truck driver who made some dangerous moves on a major freeway. Another driver's dashboard camera caught the action on Interstate 405 near the 101 in Los Angeles. This video shows a truck moving erratically before veering into the next lane, forcing that SUV to collide with another truck. Unfortunately, no one was seriously injured. Going, going, gone. An art auction where the art self-destructed. A painting by an elusive street artist named Banksy sold at a London auction Friday for $1.4 million. Moments later, an alarm sounded and the painting shredded itself through a mechanism embedded in the frame. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It was the, it was the best publicity stunt you could think of. The auction house Sotheby's was caught off guard by the prank. A spokesperson says Sotheby has not experienced this situation in the past and is in discussion about next steps with the buyer. Yeah, I'm hearing now it's actually more valuable. It I might would have doubled so. in value because of, uh, because of this mechanism and the, the entirety of the prank. I would think so too. And I, in fact, I would want to frame the shredded, <laughs> the shredded artwork. I think that's cool. <laughs> I mean, unique, right, if nothing else? Brookstone. I'm sure they'll have that. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us.